we light this candle to light our way as we journey to Jerusalem, the cross and the tomb. May its light strengthen us where the road is hard, embolden us when our hearts lose courage, and bring hope as the road grows dark. If for just one day we might walk in the shoes of others, what might we learn? That it hurts to tread a path of despair and hopelessness. That it is frightening to face a difficult journey alone. That it takes courage to step into new and unknown territory. That it is frustrating to never get to where you want to be. That it is wishful thinking to even be able to stand. That it is painful to walk with no shoes at all. Christ walks in these shoes every day. May we learn that his footprints are our guide and may our feet follow in faith. Amen.
A reading from Judges, chapter 16. Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, what is the source of your great strength? Could anyone tie you up or make you helpless? Samson replied, If you took seven locks of my hair and wove them into the fabric of the loom and fastened it with the peg, I would be as weak as anyone else. As he slept, Delilah took the seven locks of his hair, wove them into the fabric and tightened them with the pin. Then she called out, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He woke up and pulled out the peg, the loom and the fabric. Then she pleaded with him, how can you say you love me when you don't take me into your confidence? This is the third time you have deceived me and you still won't tell me the secret of your great strength. She pressed him night and day, haranguing him relentlessly until he grew sick to death of her nagging. So he told her his secret. No razor has touched my head, for I am a Nazirite, consecrated to God from the day of my birth. If my head were shaved, I would lose my strength and be no stronger than anyone else. Delilah realised that she had finally learned Samson's secret. She notified the rulers of the Philistines. They came quickly and bought the money with them. She lulled Samson to sleep on her lap and then summoned a Philistine to shave off the seven locks of his hair. And then she called out, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He woke up and thought, I'll get out of here as before. But he not, did not realise that Yahweh had abandoned him. The Philistines quickly captured him. Then they gouged out his eyes. He was bound with bronze shackles and he was put to work grinding grain in the prison. I know you might find this hard to believe, but uh, a few weeks ago I went to the local Phoenix cinema to see, wait for it, Barbie. Having got over myself wondering if the audience was just going to be me and a horde of tweeny girls and having had it recommended to me by a reliable source, Sure enough, I discovered that it was a robust comedy filled with complicated characters, philosophical jaunts and rowdy satirical commentaries on things as far as feminism, patriarchy and pop culture. It is of course centred on the classic doll, 
Barbie's striking body is entrancing to little girls who give up at a certain age their baby dolls for a fashion doll with lots of clothes and accessories and a boyfriend named Ken. And so we have all different versions. Stereotypical Barbie, a blonde, curvy, blue-eyed beauty. She lives in the glamorous community of Barbie land with many other Barbies. Dr. Barbie, President Barbie, Teacher Barbie, Physicist Barbie, Writer by Barbie, Lawyer Barbie, even Weird Barbie, who was damaged when played with too harshly by a child. And waiting for her at the beach is Ken, who only has a good day when Barbie looks at him. Other Kens also play second fiddle to all these various Barbies. Our heroine, stereotypical Barbie's day, is upset when she starts having strange sensations. She talks about death. She discovers that her thighs are not as smooth as, as they used to be. And what's more, she has flat feet that don't fit on her high heels. And she learns that these deviations are coming from whoever is her partner in the real world. So, Barbie leaves her home and sets out for this strange place called the real world where she confronts difficulties and dangers before returning home with new understandings of herself. Now Ken tags along in this quest and discovers to his surprise and delight that in the real world it's the men that are in charge. They have horses and rule as a patriarchy and he decides to bring what he's learned back to Barbie land. And there, new Barbie and all her sisters, Barbies face even more challenges as all the Kens take over and misogyny reigns. In searching for her connection in the real world, Barbie meets a group of young women, real women, including Sasha. And Sasha criticises Barbie as, quote, a tool of sexualised capitalism that has set the feminist movement back years. She also states, women hate women and men hate women. It's the only thing we agree on. Coming from Barbie land, this is a great surprise to Barbie since she thought that she and her sisters by modelling all kinds of occupations, were actually telling girls they could be whoever they wanted to be. And all the other Barbies in the various occupations and professions were under the same impression. And Barbie's reaction to all of this, most likely shared by at least half the audience, is that the real world isn't thought what I thought it was. Now, Gloria lives in the real world. Surprised to discover that even stereotypical Barbie, a gorgeous blonde, can feel insecure, she explains why contemporary society in the real world is so difficult for women. She says, It's literally impossible to be a woman. You are so beautiful and so smart, and it kills me that you don't think you're good enough. We have always to be extraordinary, but somehow we're always doing it wrong. You have to be thin, but not too thin. And you can never say you want to be thin. You have to say you want to be healthy, but also you have to be thin. You have to have money, but you can't ask for money because that's crass. You're supposed to love being a mother, but don't talk about your kids all the damn time. You have to be a career woman as well, but always also looking out 
for other people. You have to answer for men's bad behaviour, which is insane. But if you point that out to them, you're accused of complaining. You're supposed to stay pretty for men, but not so pretty that you tempt them too much or that you threaten other women because you're supposed to be part of the sisterhood. And Gloria goes on. Never forget that the system is rigged. But find a way to acknowledge that, but also always be grateful. You have to never get old, never be rude, never show off, never be selfish, never fall down, never fail, never show fear, never get out of line. It's too hard. It's too contradictory and nobody gives you a medal or says thank you. And it turns out, in fact, that not only are you doing everything wrong, but also everything is your fault. Another tale to challenge us to hear stories differently we read earlier from the Bible. And like Barbie, to be considering them from the woman's point of view. When we do that with the story of Samson and Delilah, Delilah stops being a villainous traitor and becomes an intelligent woman in an impossible situation, doing the best she can for herself and her people. Samson was an easy target. Deceiving him was, as they say in Glasgow, like taking toffee off the wains. After two failed attempts, Delilah gets the truth out of Samson that shaving his head, thus causing him to break his Nazarite vows, would bring an end to his supernatural strength, and she has no hesitation in doing what she has to do, so that he can be captured. The Philistine woman Delilah is set alongside others like the unnamed Samaritan woman whom Jesus met at a well in another story. Once again, we are challenged to put aside our preconceptions and see the humanity in someone who would have been regarded as below contempt by our own people, the Samaritans, for her immoral lifestyle. And certainly, shunned by any normal Jewish man. Jesus was not any normal Jewish man, however. He needed what she had to give him, a drink of water, and knew that her life would be transformed by what he could offer her. As well as the symbol of the water, he offered her a fresh start in life and a renewed sense of her own worth. Walking in another's shoes, seeing the world from another's point of view. A spiritual exercise for maturing faith. We light this candle in remembrance and hope to call to mind Magnus and Ronald and all the saints and all those dear to us who have gone before, especially those who have died in recent times, and as a sign of hope to future generations as yet unborn, Jesus said, I am the light of the world, whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life.
prayer. We have come to know the way through the teachings and example of Jesus, who renounced the way of violence, who spent his life breaking down barriers, who told us to love not just our neighbours but enemies and strangers and those with whom we most profoundly disagree. He came to bring peace on earth and still wars are being fought in his name and communities divided and people excluded from the fellowship of the table that should be open to all. We are part of whatever it is that keeps going wrong in this world so that good intentions turn sour Good people hurt others without meaning to, and lasting peace never quite takes hold. And so we cannot pray for others or for the healing of a broken world without asking first that we might be healed of our brokenness and set free from the fear that causes hatred and division. We pray for lands laid waste by conflict, for families divided and friendships broken, and for our churches squabbling over doctrine while hungry folk remain unfed, sick ones untended, strangers unwelcomed, and sad ones devoid of cheer. We pray today for mothers everywhere, old and young. We pray especially for those who find motherhood hard, and for those for whom motherhood has not been possible. We pray for victims of physical violence and of emotional abuse, grieving as we do so for the hurts that cause one person to treat another in these ways. We pray without words, because there are no words. And because we know already what needs to be said and what needs to be done to fulfil the purposes of love. Amen.
As we step out into a world where the true nature of a person is often hidden by the legend presented by the media, may we follow the one in whom the truth can be trusted. May we know God's peace, Jesus' love and the Spirit's stirring as we walk in faith this week. May you stay safe in the way of Christ and may you be blessed by his Spirit this day and always. Amen.